Hello everyone and welcome back to Mad for French Cars. In today's video we have this 2011 Peugeot 508 with 1.6 eHDI engine and 6 speed semi-automatic gearbox. This 508 is experiencing a gearbox fault and it says repair is needed on a dash. So we're gonna plug it up with a Diag box and we're gonna run a few little tests and see if we can come across the conclusion of what actually is faulty in gearbox if it might be a few things it might be a actuator if it doesn't want to turn or shift into any gears it might be a hydraulic fault in a hydraulic pressure in a hydraulic system leaking somewhere so we're gonna check that we're also gonna check um, speed sensor on a gearbox uh, if it measures because they are common to go and we're gonna change check the the position and action of a clutch in this 508 and try to see what is actually faulty because when it comes up with gearbox fault it could be quite a few things uh, as you can see here i lifted one of my front wheels uh, that's to do with uh, running uh, some of the life parameter measurements later and i'm gonna see if a gearbox turning a uh, turning a wheel and if it engages and stuff like that we're gonna plug the air box now and run some diagnostics and see what's gonna come up and i hope you're gonna guys enjoy this video and find it useful if you are experiencing a semi-automatic gearbox fault all right so let's get it started shall we all right so this is a 508 it's quite a nice car so when I sit behind the steering wheel, if I put on ignition, it straight away shows me a gearbox fault repair needed. Um, I can I can press the brake pedal because it's semi-automatic and start the car. And the car seems to be working absolutely fine. However, it wouldn't shift in any gear. As you can see here, um, it does shift in gears on a gear selector. It shows you. But... On here nothing changes it's still in neutral so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to plug the Yag box and once we plug the Yag box we're gonna scan the car and see if we can delete the faults and everything another thing to mention is very important that the battery is fully charged if the battery is not fully charged even the Yag box is not gonna be able to do run the tests or delete the errors which is gonna be in the car so we make sure the car battery is fully charged and right we're gonna just plug up the Yag box so the Yag box socket is here we're gonna plug the Yag box and we're gonna run some tests and as you could see my front wheel is lifted one of them that's to do with um, you know if 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 something works then the wheel should spin we're gonna feel it so I'm just gonna quickly log on to my laptop and we're gonna take it from here all right my guys so i'm just starting up my diag box i'm gonna put the car on ignition let it show me that gearbox fault i don't mind um this thing is on neutral and we're just gonna go into peugeot select 508 normal 508 i assume is now hybrid and then it recognizes the VIN code. And we're gonna run diagnostics. We're gonna run the scan on this car, see how many faults it comes up with. Okay, that's the internet, doesn't matter. So now it's just gonna run every single function on a car. It's gonna check it all out and see what's gonna come up. So you see under engine ECU there is two faults coming up and the gearbox there is a three faults coming up. Sorry about that. So it doesn't seem to find any other faults apart from ECU and gearbox so far but let's just let it finish and then we will see <laughs> it 
says switch off the ignition. So we switch off the ignition. I'm just gonna choose that. And then it says probably switch on ignition again. Switch to on again. Same fault coming up on a, on a speedometer about the gearbox fault. And now we're gonna just check out what kind of gearbox faults do we have. So as you can see here, I have P1830 vehicle speed coherence fault. I have P1739 gearbox input speed fault and we have U2003 fault in colors between vehicle status and the main wake up request information. Um, okay, so these faults in general uh, doesn't really tell me much. It says permanent fault on vehicle speed coherence fault. It says clutch, status of a clutch is actually slipping. And then we have this one, gearbox input speed, permanent fault. It says, all I see, which I want to see, is the status of a clutch is slipping. So we see a lot of stuff coming up with a clutch slipping. I don't see nothing. You see here, it says declutched. Okay, and neutral temporary. Okay, so basically, I don't see nothing major in the sense that nothing to do with actuator yet so i'm gonna go repair and try to delete these faults if i can it might let me delete them it might not let me delete them uh it might not let me delete them i'm not sure but it says faults erased so what you want to do switch off ignition off and switch ignition on what i realized if your car battery is low it's not going to let you delete these faults for some reason if a car battery is charged i just used the 407 battery now i just swapped because the battery in this car was actually dead pretty much so no faults found on this thing now so with our faults being cleared now we're going to be able to test our gearbox and see what other things we can test and if we can come to conclusion of what actually is wrong with this gearbox so if i go back to my main expert um, we can see here we pressed on the gearbox again let's say right and then we're gonna go to actuator test first and we're gonna be testing clutch actuator test so opening of the clutch we press opening of the clutch, it says the car has to be stopped, engine has to be stopped, gear lever is in position neutral as it is here, ignition on, ignition is on, right, and now it says the gearbox EC will activate the clutch, to ensure the activated test is operating correctly, please perform the following check, Listening, listen to the component operating noise, check that the clutch is open, the clutch status. So we not gonna really be able to check the clutch status, but we're gonna be listening to the component and that's gonna give us for time being a rough idea. So when I press this, I could hear the clutch. I could hear some hydraulic kind of noise. And yeah, that's, seem to be all fine closing off a clutch now exactly same procedure just press this same i it seemed to be that i could hear something maybe not as much as opening of a clutch but i still could hear something now we're not gonna go and test the gearbox actuator and we're gonna test every single gear we're gonna make sure that our gearbox can engage into every single gear what happens here when you press let's say engage gear one is exactly same activation conditions vehicle and engine stopped gear level and, and position neutral ignition on what's gonna happen here is we're gonna be able hopefully to hear the sound of the gearbox engaging into the gear but we also gonna be able to see it on our dash so I'm gonna just press the button now it should show a1 and go back to neutral as it just did so if I if I do now engaging of gear 2 and you're gonna see is gonna just for literally split second the A2 is gonna appear because the gearbox is gonna put in the automatic gear 2 
and it's going to go back to neutral so let's try that as you could see that's what's happened so you can see it on a on a dash now that it engages in a gears we're going to go and check through every single gear here so we have to test every single one so we just tried first and second automatic gears now we're going to go on a engaging a third gear and i'm going to just Yeah, I could hear it and I could see it on the dash. It actually engaged in a gear three. Now we're gonna test engaging of a gear four. Yeah, I could see engages in a gear four, engaging in a gear five. It does engage in a gear five, I could see on my dash. Engaging in a gear six. Um, I'm gonna try to do this again. I heard the noise, but I, uh, uh, the dash was too fast for me, so I couldn't see if it appeared on the dash. Yes, it did. Yeah, it works. So all the forward gears are working. Engaging in a neutral gear now. It's operational is fine now we're gonna do engaging in a reverse gear sorry about that um, we're gonna test reverse gear so I'm gonna show you the last one as well on the dash if you want uh, it's gonna come up as R and it goes back to neutral that means the gearbox actuator is actually engaging into every single gear i don't think there is a problem with that so from what i've seen so far in the fault section it's kind of leading me to believe it's either a speed sensor or a clutch because it said the clutch is slipping and a speed sig sensor signal it says no connection so what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to measure some personalized parameter measurements. Okay, so this is going to, this is really good section actually. So you can measure parameters of a gearbox. We're going to measure, we're going to measure gearbox input speed to determine if our speed sensor is working. If it shows up that, if it shows us gearbox input speed, that means the speed sensor in the gearbox is actually functioning and is working um, it should correspond to engine speed so we're going to check engine speed as well and then we're going to check a another thing which we want to investigate is our clutch position so we it said it was slipping a lot on them two folds so let's try to see a clutch position and when we're going to run the live data we're going to be able to see if it's slipping a lot or not another thing which i might check is actually hydraulic pressure these gearboxes has about 39 to 43 i would say bars of pressure in the system and you know before you change the clutch and all that you have to depressurize the system and then you have to pressurize it again so the hydraulic pressure because it's all controlled by that is actually quite important so we want to monitor hydraulic pressure and see if that is good enough because if it has a leak of hydraulic liquid somewhere we might need to look into that too so now we're gonna run these four uh, parameters so what i'm gonna do here as you can see i just started uh live data engine speed is zero gearbox speed is zero clutch position is clutched okay it's clutched actually hydraulic pressure is about 39 okay so far so good now we're gonna start a car the car starts let's just have a look and so as soon as i start the car we can see that when we look to the clutch we can see here it was clutched then it went to declutch then it was slipping for a tiny bit and then it was declutched again hydraulic pressure it was responding fine and now it stays around 43 uh, i think is a bars isn't it yeah probably 43 bars so hydraulic pressure is on 43 
uh, clutch position is declutched. Engine speed is around 800 RPM. Gearbox input speed, as you see, there was a little thing with a clutch declutch, so it picked up a little bit of speed, but that's not good enough for me to tell from this kind of data. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in auto one, which is a automatic on a gearbox, and I'm gonna accelerate and see how it behaves. It should show me something. As you can see, I can hear that the wheels are spinning, and the gearbox input speed actually corresponding with our engine speed. So that means that gearbox speed sensor is actually working. But what's happening here? As you can see, the clutch is slipping, is clutched, and then again is slipping all the way through. The pressure of hydraulic pressure it stays pretty much the same. And this data shows me one thing. You see the pressure drop, then they go back to back up again. As long as it stay within like I don't know. 38 to 46 I'm pretty happy with that because I know it changes depends on how you know system gets used what's interesting here is the clutch was slipping all the way through my acceleration when the gearbox speed was kind of similar to engine speed as you can see here these two was corresponding so gearbox and I could feel the wheel spinning as well, so that means the wheel is spinning in the front. So the gearbox is spinning a wheel, the speed is increasing on a gearbox and an engine, and the clutch is just slipping, that's all it does really. So I think it's pretty clear for me that I don't have no issue with a hydraulic pressure. I don't seem to have an issue with a speed sensor because we just determined that it shows the gearbox input speed. And the only problem I see here so far is is my clutch position and which is slipping basically most of the time unless it's declutched. So I guess next time we're gonna make a video of how to change the clutch on this six speed semi-automatic is in this 508 because that seemed to be the main problem with the giving a gearbox fault for us and you know preventing us from using this car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna get out of the live data. There's nothing else really here to see. I did find out what I wanted to find out. I hope uh, what I've showed you here, it's just a little simple test, but it helps a lot to kind of determine what is actually faulty. You know, you don't wanna replace the gearbox if the gearbox is operational. You don't wanna you know replace the clutch if it might be just your speed sensor messing about and you know it's good to know if your hydraulic pressure is 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 on point or is not so i hope you find this video useful guys and i hope that my next video how i'm gonna replace the semi-automatic gearbox clutch will be even more useful so stay tuned subscribe the channel like the video if you can and i will see you shortly guys thank you for watching